The center's first large-scale event will be in mid-March for the United States Teenage Olympic Table Tennis Trials. In West Monroe, Riley Kramer, KNOE 8 News. <laughs> ULM tight end Rylan Green took it upon himself to help Dominique Hawkins after seeing the story on KNOE about his struggles with bullying as a special needs kid. Sometimes it's not just about football. You know, we can do things that are bigger than football. Always stay yourself, bro. You ain't got to change to nobody. People are they gave me confidence. <laughs> and they uh, told me that everyone in the world is not me. Dominique says the guys made him feel like he was a part of the team. So Warhawks on three. Warhawks on three. One, two, three. Warhawks! Don't ride, Dominique. Let's take a look at the map to set the scene. Now this photo was taken after the explosion and shows the top of one container that actually blew off and landed here during the explosion. Three people, Chris Kate, Nick Bulliard, and Lee Green, were working on this well, which had about five feet of crude oil buildup and is the one that exploded. I'm glad that I saved him. Because he's family. Why wouldn't I save him? Allie Glass is just eight years old, but knew exactly what to do after a late night four-wheeling accident almost took her great-grandpa's life. I seen that opening. I thought it was my four-wheeler trail. It was the canal. Then we just tipped. I, I knew that he was old, so I just picked him up. I mean, I was pumping on adre adrenaline, whatever you call it, and so I could pick him up, I guess. Allie says she was scared but didn't have time to waste when she noticed her 83-year-old great-grandpa was pinned under the four-wheeler and couldn't breathe. She pulled him up enough for him to get air while she could get help. And I just ran, ran to go get, get anyone. But it wasn't a simple task. Allie ran barefoot with her shoes in one hand and a flashlight in the other until she reached home where they called 911. Probably saved my life. After her heroic actions, Allie was given a badge and the title of Honorary Sheriff's Deputy in Franklin Parish. Your quick actions and your bravery and your courage, thank you so much for that. But Allie made it clear that she didn't do it for the recognition. I mean, if it's family, you should always intervene. Absolutely. Or friends. Absolutely. Doesn't matter. Absolutely. According to the arrest warrant, a hallway camera captured audio where Boyd is responding to the child's question, saying, quote, I'm sorry, I lost it. Caldwell Parish Sheriff Clay Bennett says based on information they were given at the time, he and the district attorney decided to charge Boyd with negligent injury because they believed it to be unintentional. She flipped a chair. It shouldn't have been flipped, period. Riley Kramer joins us now live from the scene. And what more can you tell us, Riley? Thank you. Jennifer, I'm here at the Parkview Apartments, where, as you can see behind me, the fire department is wrapping up. Chief Fire Investigator Shabrodrick Jones tells me the fire started on the second floor of apartment building number nine. Need to come out and tell the public uh, what they found in the investigation. Mm -hmm. uh, be, be more transparent to the public. Charles Bradford, a Bastrop resident and pastor, says there are too many unanswered questions about what happened the day that 29-year-old Trey Gorey was killed by Officer Givens. We need to know that for the simple reason, for the safety of the officer, for the safety of the community. He called on the Bastrop mayor, the district attorney, and Louisiana State Police to provide more information about the investigation and the decision to reinstate Officer Givens. Jennifer, the town hall meeting is meant for the Department of Justice to hear from citizens about their experiences with state police. Stories of abuse. When my child made it home, my child was black and blue. Disrespect. He couldn't hardly walk up the steps. And perceived racism. And it hurt. I, could, I wouldn't do a dog like they did my child. These topics were a common theme among citizens who shared their interactions with state police. They kicked him in the mouth. They stopped him. They beat him. They broke his arm. They refused her to see her child because of the damage that they had did to him. Yvonne Ellis is a mother who came to the town hall meeting to share her son's story in hopes of getting justice. She believes there's a clear pattern of racism within Louisiana State Police, and she's one of the many who came to speak up. The policies and procedures that need to be revisited in the state of Louisiana. Amen. 